We're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. It's the ladies of Reed watching wine. And I'm Raya. Treva. Champagne. And Lynn. And today we are bringing to you, yeah, I can, I can talk it up this time, the book two movie adaptation of The Willoughby's. Yes. I know it. I know it. <laughs> I'm the cartoon head, I'm the animation head, and we did The Willoughby's. <laughs> Somebody was so excited about this book, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was, almost um, sounded like you was on a I don't piggy when you said that. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So the Willoughby's was also written by Luis um, Lowry, who also wrote The Giver. And we have reviewed The Giver before. If you have not listened to that, download it, check it out. And um that was actually my pick. Yeah. Oh, I did not realize that. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. That's because we write her. We write her. Mm -hmm. We write her. Explains a lot. Yes, it does, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so today we are, so you guys can see I have a background on drinking. It's called horseshoe and hand grenades. It is um, a black owned winery that's yes. out in Oregon. Um, my dear friend Michael referred that me to her friend Stephanie Carrillo, who owns the company um, okay. Rose Creek Wine. Um, it's a wine club and they support all people of color in their wineries. So they have all different arrays of wine and um, different businesses. So uh, thanks, Stephanie, for this recommendation. But this thank is you. a um, thank you, thank you. Cabernet. I drank most of it, so I got I can't really read it. Uh, what is it? It was a noir wine, but it, you, you know me, I like to dry. So <laughs> it was very tasty. Lynn, I don't understand why they keep talking about us. I mean, we're here. It's okay. My glass is empty. <laughs> I fill her up. Fill her up. I know. I'm about to reach over to my bar like and get more. Two of you. Just- you know, over hate, 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 hate. Anyways, <laughs> back to the actual. Ray, you see an honor of you. I've got my candy canes because this is an old kid review. <laughs> and I tell what that oh. Didn't realize that's what that was for. That's perfect. I knew what that was for. I was trying to ignore it. <laughs> Man, I should have worn like some bunny ears or something. Something, mm-hmm. right. I could have planned that better. Yeah. Now, like all blacked out over here. That's festive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anyways. so I'm curious because you said this was the same person that did The Giver, which was not a cartoon. So I'm wondering what his specialty is, or does he just have a ra- variety of both? Her specialty is just Her. in good. Her. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, That's clearly, she has some um, deep, dark stuff, secrets going on. I don't know. You know how to explain that. But the giver was dystopian in this whole alternate world. And we're about to review this <laughs> kid's book, <laughs> which I want to start. I had to go like Google when this book came out because some of the references, I was like, this is like 1932. <laughs> and they were talking about going to Africa and getting the savages. And I'm like, say what? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like. Is that like a, a actual minuscule? Is it a small part, but like the verbiage? Cause you know how when we listen to Stephen King and he'd be dropping oh. like the N words and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, this was out in 2008. Um, I don't understand why we're referencing. Just- I get that it's an old fashioned story. So maybe that's why, but that really threw me off for a little bit. Yeah. But um, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, I did I- not. <laughs> she got something to say don't do that yeah, it. I was like okay um, um Linda said it all like why I mean why they gotta be savages like what's what's going on I wasn't with you on that part <laughs> but I really liked that the book was for one set in um Europe 
and some of the cities that they were mentioning in like Rotterdam I've been to. So I was just like, oh, I can actually imagine like this old decrepited house that's been there for years. And when they were talking about like the different languages and how like Rotterdam in the Netherlands is like a port like city. So, um, well, Amsterdam is, but I can understand like how someone would get lost at sea. So like for me, visually, I really got to be able to go through this book and like visualize landscape. So I was like, okay, I can kind of feel what was going on. It's a little dark for me though. It's a little bit dark for the kids. Yeah. So I agree. I'm, I'm thinking about the author and of course the prior book. And I'm like, there's some family parent conflict going on in this person's life. Yeah. Who the heck creates a kid's book with like such horrific parents? <laughs> Just I'm, I'm reading the book and I'm like, wait, am I messing up? Like, am I not understanding what's happening here? Is this a kid's book? I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> A little bit dark. Like, I don't love you, and you can't have my food, and I never should have had kids. I was like, is this for kids? Because I don't think it is. <laughs> as an at adult, that, at that point, like, were you like, what is Rhea <laughs> suggesting here? Of course, what is I was. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> well, your whole thing about, like, Christmas and family, like, getting, it, getting together, and I'm like, this is literally the opposite. Literally. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that, Ray. I'm like, oh my God, let's do the Willoughby's around Christmas because it's kind of a Christmassy movie. It's the opposite of Christmas. Whatever that I means. Mean, I guess for a while. But it's a far stretch. I mean, the <laughs> of the book was not <laughs> Christmassy, but like, <laughs> yeah, I get that. But other than that, it was not Christmassy, Ray. I was like, this is not. I, I don't know where that is. I meant like feel good at the end type blah. But feel horrible for ninety percent of the book. <laughs> well, some of these Christmas—that's what they do. For some of these Christmas movies, it's horrible until the end. You're right. The Grinch was horrible until the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess, but like, it's it's funny. It's Jim Carrey. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, what else y'all got to say about my movie? Well, let me just you know, book. even though it was kind of crazy. Oh, I actually, yeah, you're my book. I actually like the story. I'm, I'm just going to give it to you. Um, it was a really cute story. And uh, so that's all I got to say. So, okay, so I like the story. I don't know if I would call it cute because it was demented in a way. Um, but I like the book. Um yeah, I don't really. Wait, I didn't. Know. I didn't hear that one. I didn't. I didn't hear that one more time. Uh, I got my little do rag <laughs> bun on today because uh, it's a bad hair day, but I still can listen. What did I mean, you the just book say? Was, the book was interesting. Um, yeah, we all heard it. It's all right, Brad. We all heard it. Yeah, it was yeah. interesting. I actually liked it. I thought it was cute. I thought the characters were cute, and um. And the storyline, yeah, it did have a happy ending. So it all came together in Love and Roses. Yes. You know, I'm always looking for things that talk about, you know, differences in life and growing up. And, you know, yeah, it was a book. But I did a lot of um, Google searches on whether or not um, this actually was like somebody's real life. I did too. <laughs> Are you did? Well, it like it would be, it would have to be in a way, except for the part where I'm sending my parents away to die for the most part. But you know, oh, I don't know. People do it. I don't know. I, I mean, mean, they were locking their kids the, in the he, ba- he basically was. True. He basically wrote the book based on a lot of like a, a lot of different people's um, situations. So <laughs> babies are abandoned. <laughs> you know, terrible things happen you know, relatives kind of show up, nannies kind of take care of the kids. So it was kind of like this particular story wasn't real, but different instances from different people's lives made up the story. I mean, you know, I'm always, especially, you know, for younger kids, I'm always kind of like, you need to look at the story because you think you got it bad, you know, that kind of thing. Well, you spoiled us on the one. Look what these kids had to do because never gonna watch this again tonight, Okay. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Poor Nappy. I don't know. I feel like some serious abuse going on right now. (laughs) Got my baby. Got my baby. (laughs) 
So but yeah, I, that's what I thought was really interesting about it. Sorry, Trina, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say you're saying he pulled bits and pieces from other people's stories to come up with this story of like how a group of kids could possibly be treat, um, treated. I guess the other thing that I was wondering is if he was an orphan. Mm-hmm. Um, and did he have some experiences being an orphan? I didn't do any research on it, um, but I said since you and Lynn seem to be really into it, I didn't know whether you all re- researched that aspect. Okay, so I'm just going to cut everybody off. Uh, the author is she, female. Yeah. Oh, female. female. Yes. yes. You did tell me that already. But Ray is a he, and so she confused me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Louise? <laughs> yes. It's Louise, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I Louise think Ann? I got it because it looks like Lewis, but um, that's probably what Louise Ann. Ann. Is that better? Thank you. Louise Ann. Ann. Yeah. So we'll just remember that Ann part there. It helped you out. <laughs> with the yeah. Pronoun. yeah. <laughs> what did y'all think of the movie? Well, I loved it. I, uh, so really? I love the movie. It was so cute. And I am like the biggest Maya Rudolph fan in the world. So once I heard her voice, I was just sold. Um, but, you know, it didn't follow the storyline. So when I talk about the adaptation, it bothered me. But then there's a part of me that realizes that they probably had to modify it just to make it more entertaining and kid friendly. I don't know. I, I just, they make too many changes that I don't know that they need. I don't like it. Okay. Well, I like I think the story. I, I like the story. The the cartoon. I like the I like the visual to go with the book. It did not stay with the storyline. And my biggest <laughs> issue, it drove me freaking crazy, is that they took out the entire part of Baby Ruth. I thought that was the that was so reason I like Ruth. That's the reason I like the book. I was like, because when it got to that part, I was like, oh my god, that is kind of me. You know, which is why I like the book. But then for you not to have it, I felt like that was an important part to know, to carry over. Like it was subtly kind of sprinkled upon because in the book, it wasn't a fact, a candy factory. It was just like an old decrepit house. But in the movie, it was a factory. And when they were talking about what to name her and they used the icing or whatever and chose Ruth and they were like, oh, she's a baby because of Ruthless. And so I think it was more of a play at adults for us to put it together than like a I kid to know what a baby Ruth is. I would have never put that together if I didn't read the book. I know, Ruth because I wouldn't have tied it. I did. Either, yeah. But you know what I'm thinking? Like it could have been a trade <clears throat> issue. You never know. A what? Like a trademark issue. Oh. Candy bar. Um, could be, yeah. My yeah. mom, because of the time that the other author had told us um, from Silver Linings Playbook about the music. Right. Right. Um, so that could be a reason why they went, didn't go there. Because I just thought, oh, it's a candy factory. Of course, they're going to talk about right. the Amy Ruth connection. But I, I was upset about that. And I was just upset about the whole postmaster removing his whole background and dialogue. Like in the book, he had there was a whole section. About- yeah, it's so much more significant. But, you know, there is a will of these two. <laughs> there is. <laughs> I've done that research too. So it could be that we touch upon some of these other things, some things they can't even bring back because it's it was so off, but some things they might be able to, you know. I, I think they had to change so much because, I mean, it was just, it, it was crazy. But I think they still kind of got the part about like some parents just don't really care for their kids and they're all about themselves and probably just should never have been parents um, because- that's kind of all they care about is each other. I think also like because it was made for kids, they had to take some of like the deeper stuff out and make it more silly. Like True. how obsessed the mom was with her knitting. Right. And when um, Jane was singing how he was, um, the dad was encouraging the madness. Like she can't knit, she can't miss a stitch. Which I kind of felt that because I'm the same way. I'm like, don't talk to me when I'm crocheting because I will drop a stitch and like hate you because I will figure it out 20 minutes later. But I feel like those little things <laughs> had to add humor to the story to make yeah. it like funnier for the kids, like the dad purring, which I laugh every yeah. time because that is so crazy. Yeah. But like it's irrelevant to the book, but it's a new, an animated cartoon. So I think that's yeah. why they kind of had to swap some of those things out. So, that, the little girl so, the boy, him in the hallway and was just like, how dare you burp 
on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out of this room. I was like, can you just say to the baby, you burn? Get out. <laughs> yes. I died. I, I was like, oh my gosh. I also didn't like the fact they changed um, how Tim, the oldest brother, was so was basically acting as though he was the parent in a, in a sense, like controlling and bossing the little ones around. But in the movie, it wasn't like that at all. I mean, a little bit, right. but not like it. they made it so full. Yeah, I, they downplayed that. Yeah, he, it wasn't as, he wasn't, at, I mean, in the book, he was a lot meaner to me. In the, in the movie, yeah. he was more, of course, I'm the only one who cares, so I'm being responsible, but he wasn't kind of mean about it. Right, and like, right. Yeah. And, and then why, James but it was, was kind of like why the rest of y'all came around because I was doing fine on my own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my own self to defend to look out for. Little Jane was more timid in the book to me. Like in the yeah. Book, oh yeah. More empowered. Yes. Right. That was a change in the dynamic. Yeah. But I love right. Barnaby A and Barnaby B. They cracked oh me. <laughs> if they so I'm switching them I'm I'm me. that same sweater every five seconds. What? Yeah. Sweater? Oh my gosh, the sweater killed me. I was like, oh my sweater. god. <laughs> so at first I was like, well, wait, why are why is the sweater that same color? But I had to remember that they were making the yarn or the mom was making the yarn out of the dad's mustache hair. And if, because their hair was bright pink, it, the sweater had to be bright pink instead of beige. <laughs> so at first I was like, it's not a beige sweater. And then I remembered mustache hair, yarn, creepy as heck. It made sense then. <laughs> But the whole, you get it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you fight over it on Saturdays. I was like, okay. It's like, <laughs> little mushroom heads. I like the nanny. How did you like the nanny? I loved her. That was nanny. Oh my gosh. I mean, I love that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I loved that because I love Maya Rudolph. The only thing about that dialogue that I didn't like is that there seemed like there could have been a little bit more storyline on her um, background in the um, orphanage, because when the big military woman came and, you know, made her comments, like we didn't really have a frame of reference for that. Like why yeah. it was all the blue. Why she was so intimidated yeah. by this. Like I would have loved a little bit more of some yep. prints since they changed that from the book anyway. Mm-hmm. It should have been a little bit of a backstory. Just a quick flash of her childhood or something. Right, something. Because it, it sure. kind of left it hanging. But I do like how they kept the d- dynamic between her and the commander, which was self-proclaimed commander, um, together and, like, correlated it to today's terms with, like, texting and, like, the voice messages. <laughs> and how, she, like, I like how they changed that part to be more relatable to, like, what kids would understand. Like, they're not going to yeah. understand half of, like, the stuff from like 2008, let alone yeah. two years ago. So I do like that. Like a telegram. <laughs> right. <laughs> a CD. <laughs> um, so, Treva, uh, you asked a question earlier about um, Lois, Lois uh, being an, an orphan or whether or not she was, no, she was not. She um, was raised by her parents. She was born in Hawaii um, her actual real name was originally Sina and her grandmother made her parents change the name to an American name, not Norwegian, because she was born um, in the States. Oh, so, yeah, she was. And when this was changed or, or when this was made into a movie, she was already like 80. So, hmm. um, yeah, I don't I'm assuming she's still alive because she was like 84. Right. Um, so that's actually anyway, really cool. Media, which is fun fact you know, fun fact it's she's not she's alive <laughs> according to wikipedia okay good okay so no one's gone in and changed it if she has passed oh. and louise if you if you have the internet sorry to sound ageist but uh i think it's that. lois is it lois yeah i'm sorry i'm messing it i'm thinking about my friend louise so lois i'm sorry so lois it was a really cute story she's got a great imagination yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so when I know you talked about the dad and the purring, but this whoa, whoa. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> what to do with that? I'm like, what is that symbolizing? <laughs> and how it like comforted the mom. Oh man, I loved how creepy <laughs> was that like, was. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 
what's happening right now? I don't, what is that supposed to mean? Like, what is, that? you know how like certain sounds like soothe people, okay. like certain people mm. like to hear like the scraping <laughs> on a chalkboard. Who? Some people like to hear Who like that. The um, ASMR. Listen, go to some, go to some, what oh. is it? Only fans. And some people like to hear people. Oh, that's true. That disgusts me. Close your dang gone mouth. Like, what is wrong with you? Close. Didn't yes. somebody teach you to close your mouth when you eat? But some people. True. There are people on YouTube who are millionaires because they do mukbangs and ASMR like simulations and just exactly. Mm-hmm. Some people like to hear. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, in the movie, when <laughs> perform that act, it was usually when they were intimate. And so I'm trying to figure out what that's, I mean, that was just, I don't know if I'm reading more into it, but it was kind of crazy. Like if you, you probably are reading more into it with all it candy coming out your mouth. <laughs> all I'm saying, it was like, every time she was like, ooh, 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 he was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I laughed out loud as a full grown adult every time he did that. <laughs> Hmm. Trina, what is that on your um, cup there? Uh, here you come in. Yep, can't see if you would pull it in for your face. There you go. Oh, there you go interesting. Go ahead, her. Go ahead, her. Stuff about her. Did you get that? I got this when Dennis and I did our Harriet Tubman journey um, a couple of years ago. We went to every single one of the markers and we sort of followed her freedom path. From Maryland. All the way to- did you walk it like she did, or did you? We absolutely did not walk it. We rode it. Oh, okay. Car, but it took us several days because we actually stopped at each marker. A lot, some of them were museums. And it took us about four days to get through it, and then from there we just went to New York to hang out with his. So family. imagine like walking and jumping trains. Well, and all yeah, that. that's what we would say every day. Like you should have put some rocks in your socks. Yeah, I'm not playing them games. I believe. Yeah appreciate what she did just because we were driving it and I was exhausted every day. So, Look, we appreciate it because we up on here being seen, right? Not downstairs, out back in the backyard in the shed with whips on our backs. <laughs> so yeah, I know you appreciate it. Okay, so we went from a kid's movie <laughs> to whipping slaves. <laughs> <What's happening? laughs> How do you never know what we're going to talk about, clearly. Right. I was sitting here like, sorry, sorry. I mean, it just, I was saw the cards. I was like, I mean, saw the cards. It's a glitch in the matrix. It's all right. Back in. Um, So, what did y'all think about the cast? So, but there was some abusive stuff going on in the movie. So, I get the tie, Ray. I get it. Don't encourage the madness. (laughs) Stop being an enabler. I'll take another drink to that. So I I really enjoyed the cast. I think the voices match the animated characters. Sure. Like I love my Rudolph. I think Terry Crews did a great job. I the- love uh, always Ricky face. Like his yeah. comedy is hilarious, and him playing a cat and saying like you know what everybody's thinking is he has a baby in a box and I'm gonna <laughs> sit in it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I love Ricky Gervais. He is like a comedy. Yes. Kid. I love him so much too. Yeah. That's funny. Very funny. But I have no protest to any of like the casting. I mean, Martin Short playing the dead, purring all Spot the time. On. I can on. imagine him being in the studio, like with his neck up against like the microphone <laughs> purring, because it's Martin Short. He's also a comedic genius. So yes. I have no protest to the casting. I'm not familiar with the guy that played um Tim, the oldest son, though. I, I don't know him. What's what was his name? name? Will Forte. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a comedian too. Okay. Yeah, he's a comedian too. He's he's, he's behind the scenes a lot, but he's in a couple of movies too. Okay. And then they probably like recorded their lines like individually. But could you imagine if they had all of these like stars together in oh. one studio recording it? <laughs> I know it would take like sixteen years to get through it because you would just laugh. I'd never get time. through it. Right. Exactly. I could not be in the same room with Maya Rudolph. Because Maya Rudolph is a comedian herself too, oh, so I could Rudolph. only imagine. Right. Oh, she's just 100% ignorant. Like, I just, I don't know. When she's on... She, I, know, Will, Will was on Saturday Night Live from 2002 to 2010. Yeah. 
Okay, so I don't know. Um, you have to look at it. Yeah, I, think I may have missed it because I don't miss an episode of Saturday Night Live. So that's what I'm saying. He looked very mm. different, though. Oh, okay. I mean, he wasn't very different. person, so you know. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that's probably why they're be damn. I'll be damn, Lynn. <laughs> I'm just saying. I forgot you wouldn't have. You were just listening to the voice, not looking at the picture. Right, right. I, the name didn't sound familiar. I know, me. but I could not pass right. up the opportunity to make that. Well, I appreciate man. you reeling that in. <laughs> oh my god, y'all was stupid. <laughs> oh, Lynn, her sarcasm it didn't look familiar. Okay. Are you muted, Brian? I know. I think she's um she's calling us names in her head right now. <laughs> don't let it out too much because people at work don't know. <laughs> all right, we all ready to rate this adaptation. Yes. First, before you rate the adaptation, I need you to say one more time how much you love the book. Don't go carried away because we, we didn't. Because the adaptation is a little different, but how did you like the book? Get carried away. It was, it was a- I. Okay, so I have to just let everybody know that this was Raya's pick. And I know we said it earlier, but like you have to understand the emphasis on Raya's pick because it's usually rough. Um, <laughs> she's had a few. Um, <laughs> Alters. Talk about Artemis collection. Fowl. I'm telling you, when I figure, I'm, if I ever see the producer of Artemis Fowl, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a knockdown drag out argument. Seriously, <laughs> I have a legal. So don't, because I'm gonna be held for that for the rest of my life. Assault. That's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't just the movie with Artemis Fowl. So it that's... was just the movie because you could have made the movie bring out the book so much better. I don't know what Disney's problem well, you was. Had to, you had to get through the book, Ray, and you know I didn't. Yeah, but the problem is, is there's so more there's so more versions of this book. It gets better and better, and I'm never going to read that. Does it? Does it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, thank so. I don't think so. That's my so, point. So convincing on this one. Artemis so, Disney we're ruined talking this. About Artemis Fowl. This book. Okay. Good. Damn, you, you. You had a great. <laughs> You had yeah, I just wanted everybody pick. to know the storyline behind when it's Rhea's pick because it's always um, interesting. Not yeah, always whatever. bad. I'm just saying it's always interesting. We just so are bracing we ourselves. Race, <laughs> I wanted everybody to understand how we feel. <laughs> Champagne, can you start? Because you'll be a little nicer, I think. Okay. okay. So I did, in, it, the book was interesting. I did not dislike it. Um, it did not stay true to the adaptation at like very little, but because I like the both of them separately, I will give it a long day for me. Oh, and that's sweet. <laughs> well, you can't expect a long day from Tree, but that's a short clip. When? when did you? Um, okay, so I actually like the book because I was able to reference, like have a whole visual scene in my head of like that territory that part of the country or part of Europe but whatever and it was a little a little dark and I tend to like dark so I'm okay with that I like the book the adaptation was a little off but I do understand why they made those changes because it couldn't be as dark as the book and be a kid's movie so the little funny jokes and the comedians that were in it made it feasible to be a kid's movie so I'm actually going to give it a full glass because they did the best they could with what they had to make it a kid's movie. That was really nice of you, Lynn. That's really nice of you, I'm an amazing I'm person. I'm not going there. My God. <laughs> I think I, I like the both the book and the movie. Similar to you, to both of you. I like both of them. Um, but the adaptation was poo-poo. And so for me, I'm going to give it a half glass because they just veered off too much. And maybe they should have made it like a young teen um, animated something rather than focusing on the little kids so that they could stay a little bit more true to the storyline. It's all right. I'm just going to tell Dennis to start firing at you and re- oh, re- re- oh. review it later on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a half so blast for me, for me. To be honest, I love both of them. I actually was going to give it a sip. It was my, my pick. <laughs> but I do know that they did sway off. Um, there were still kids in the movie um, there were still horrible parents in the movie. Um, so 
I'm I'm at, I'm at a long I'm at a long day myself. I was about to say, if you would give this a sip, I was like, well, that took a turn to the left. <laughs> I mean, as far as the adaptation, I was going to give it a sip. I really yeah. Um. Anyway, my pick. Please check it out. Please review. Type in, you know, this is going to be posted. If you have some comments, add the comments. It didn't have to be today, but comment. Let us know how you felt about it. It's very, very quick read. Um, movies on Netflix. It's really cute. Check it out. So didn't get a full bottle. Sorry. No. You've not drank the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> full bottle, full bottle for someone. Right. But I agree. Check it out. It's really cute. Um, read the book. It's an easy, quick read. So you'll get through it like that. And then check yeah. out the movie. Let us know what you think. All right. And then check us out for the next episode. We got lots of new books coming. Yeah. We're going to be posting them soon. So please check back to see what we're posting of our next five to be ready. And they're literally all across the board again. Yes, <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to the book. Don't have your fit, mind but... set on one genre because... Uh... Be yeah, because it's a doozy what we got coming up. <laughs> so stay in the house. So stay safe. COVID is real. Read a book. Get online and participate in our conversation. Yeah. Yes. Bye. Bye. On readwatchwine.com. Mm -hmm. Follow Instagram, us. Follow us. YouTube. Facebook. Bye, guys. <laughs>